Hello everyone, you're listening to Lipstick and Leather, and with me right now is Josh Todd Buck Cherry. How's your day going, Josh? Hey, it's going good, man. Uh, last day in Canada, as you said, uh, Thunder Bay tonight, and uh, it's been going really great. A lot of fun. Very cool. Now, have you started writing for a new CD already? No, we just dropped our 10th record last year, so we're still touring on that. Volume 10, it's so good, and... Um, yeah, we'll probably start writing a little later on in the year for the new record, probably be released next year sometime. Will there be a fourth video of Volume 10? Um, I don't think so. Maybe. Now, a lot of bands are just weekend warriors. Now, you guys are road dogs. You tour, tour, tour. Now, what's the secret of touring so often and not burning out and keeping your voice intact? Yeah, I mean, we've always toured a lot. We kind of based our, re our reputation on our live show, you know, and... Um, we play a lot of B markets, which are nooks and crannies of this planet that, you know, a lot of people don't get to, and that's a lot of fun for us, you know. Um, I don't know, we're just from that old school where you tour on a record cycle, you know, and that's what we've always done, um, so, yes. Being a licensed phlebotomist, have you ever been in a situation where you had to draw blood from someone? Many times. Yeah. Yeah, I was pretty good at it. I could get you in the hand pretty good. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> now you've been sober for 29 years how do you still write about uh, drugs and drinking and partying and that being a clean person is it difficult to do sometimes I don't really write about that too much anymore um, you know I reminisce about those days the fun parts of it you know and uh, you know that was mainly on the first records you know but um, yeah um, I don't know, it's part of my life, you know, it was a, uh, I got loaded for 10 years, so I got a lot of memories to write about. I write about all kinds of stuff. After Too Drunk leaked, leaked as the first single before, now if Too Drunk didn't leak, would the band have released Rescue Me as the first single instead? Probably. Interesting. Yep. Now with the Black Butterfly bonus tracks, Nothing, and Staying High being written for 15, why weren't these tracks on the Japan version of uh, 15? Oh, I have no idea. Those are really obscure songs. I don't even know where they were released. Uh, but, you know, they weren't... Let's see, nothing I really liked. Mm -hmm. yeah. Now, I find Talk Me has a bit of a Fastback 69 vibe. Do you agree? Um, maybe. I don't know. I never thought about it too much. Would you guys ever release a live DVD? We've talked about it, but, you know, uh, just have never gotten one together, um, especially, you know, it's hard to sell DVDs, now, you know, because it's pretty much just content. So we just, like, do lots of content and release it on our socials, and that's how you market records now, you know, so I don't know if DVDs would even work anymore. Now, before Buck Terry broke up, there were a bunch of songs written. The only one making the album 15 was Crazy Bitch. Will the rest of the tracks ever be released, maybe at some point down the road? Probably not. You know, there's a lot of, you know, B tracks, you know, that I, you know, that just songs that don't make a record, don't make a record for a reason. They're just not good enough. And, you know, we don't want them. We don't want them out there. And um, I don't know. We've revisited like demos and stuff that didn't make a record and we're like hmm that's why you know and you revisit it and you're like uh there's maybe the chorus is good or the verse is good or the rest of the song needs to be re reworked and and then we're in a whole new place in time by the time we look back at that and we just write new music now buck terry is supposed to have a song on the gone in 60 seconds soundtrack what what, what track was it and what, how come that didn't happen well, I don't know. You're digging deep. I, I have no idea. That's like a long, long time ago, so I have no idea. You're self being influenced by the blues. How was it meeting James Brown at Woodstock in 99? That was, uh, that was a rock and roll fantasy come true. I'm a huge James Brown fan, so um, I mean, got so lucky that I got to get that picture for sure. That was a real, real moment for me. Now, Time Bomb is my favorite Buck Cherry CD. How do you feel DreamWorks uh, promoted the album with only one video being released? They didn't promote it at all, and uh, it was uh, it was kind of the beginning of the end for us with that label, you know. Um, there was a lot of a lot of stuff, a lot of um, uh, just stuff that I don't really want to get into. But like you know, it it just it's it's unfortunate because that's one of my favorite BC records as well. I think it's really great. 
can we ever expect a Buck Cherry box set? Because you guys were at least, you have tons of like 20, 30 songs you write for every album. You guys have tons of extra stuff. Yeah, yeah. Uh, a box set of like B tracks? Yeah. Yeah, no. Like I said, you know, it's just not for the public. There was talks of Buck Terry before you guys broke up of yourself jamming with Slash, Nikki Six, and Steve Gorman. Was there any truth to this? So we we jammed with Slash. That's what the Kings of Chaos thing was at one point. Like, you know, Slash, Duff, Matt, me, and Keith. Now you've been writing a screenplay of your life. Will this ever be released? Uh, it was loosely based on my life, but it's a it's a different type of screenplay. But no, I don't know. Maybe. If I have time, I don't have any time. Now, Slam Hound have a ton of tracks. Full of Sin, Feel Good, Corrupt Me, Still in Bed, Cry in the Wind, Chaos Person Fight, Rolling Thunder, I Can't Make It, Alone, and Love Dead, Don't Have. Would this stuff ever be released? Great. It's a great record. Um, we have a whole record. It's called Chaos Personified. I don't own it, or I would uh, definitely release it. It was uh, made on a label called Skydoor Records, and there's somebody else who... Uh, owns the rights to that record and I've spoken to him uh, about it and uh, I don't know when he feels like he wants to release it or something. It's a good record though. Uh, very, very young. Very young. I don't even sound the same. Like the same person. <laughs> now on your solo tour, you when you were doing your solo album, which I really love, you've been known to play uh, Death March, Famous, and False Idols, which didn't make You Made Me. Were these tracks ever recorded? I don't know, I can't remember. Okay, well that looks like it. that's it. Thank you so much for your time, Josh, I really right, appreciate man. it.